Hey, you guys, Oscar here with Gold River Insurance, uh, your trucking insurance broker. Uh, so today we're going to go over one of the most common questions that we get asked when applying for a USDOT and or MC number. And that is, uh, what permits do I need after I complete my USDOT and MC number? So I have it broken down two sections. Uh, we're going to go over interstate operations. So for those of you staying within the state line, your, your, your cargo is going from point A to B within the state. And then uh, your interstate operations. So if your cargo is coming from any port, whether that's um, a port of entry um, by air uh, or by sea, um, then you'll need your uh, MC authority. So I go over both interstate and interstate to show you what permits you're going to need, depending on what you, which operations you're going to do. Um, and then lastly, one of the things to note is that all these places that I'm referencing where you can go get some of these items, you'll have all the links below, all right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is with what you need for your interstate and or interstate authority. Okay, so uh, to begin with, uh, let's go over basics for your business. And I, I get the questions a lot uh, just for like uh, some basic things. And I know you guys are in a hurry and I get it. You, you want to get this started, but I'll tell you what, you're going to save a lot of money if you just take your time and do your due diligence on this. So one of the, one of the main questions I get asked when starting your company is, should I get my name first? or after applying for the DOT, or should I wait for my LLC to get cleared or should I start my DOT? So the answer is you should definitely wait. Uh, I see more errors by not waiting uh, for you to have to go back, including update the, the tax ID number, um, update with uh, FMCSA, it's, it's just, it's gonna take too much time. So just hold off, get your business structure right, get your name right, and then go ahead and start your DOT. So uh, the very first thing is you wanna get right is your business structure, whether well, that's gonna be a sole proprietorship, LLC, uh, corporation or partnership um, and you want to speak with a CPA but really you don't want to be going into business as a sole proprietor doing business as there's really no uh, protection for you so you do want to get into CPA but I recommend LLC or corporation uh, for you to get uh, started with your business uh, the next thing you want to get and again guys this is before whether you're going intra or interstate operations it doesn't matter this is just the basics for a business uh, the next thing you want to get right is your tax ID or your EIN, your em employer's identification number. And you can get this from the IRS. Uh, again, you'll see some of these links below. It's a very simple five to 10 minute process. As soon as you're done, you'll actually get your tax ID at the end. Next thing you wanna go ahead and open up is your bank account. You're actually gonna need the business structure information and your tax ID, uh, plus two verifications of ID to go ahead and open up that bank account. After that, you need your email or in any order really. You can use the same email you have, um, but if you guys seen the other video where I talk about how swamped your, your email, your inbox and, and um, how your phone gets hit up just a lot, I know I've seen a lot of comments about that. So um, it's up to you. I would definitely just get another get another email, you know, your name trucking um, at gmail.com, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, but definitely separate it from your personal. Uh, it'll be good too, so that that way, you know how we can get a lot of junk in our personal. You don't want business stuff to get to get all mixed up with that. Phone number. Um, again, it's up to you. Um, you know, I know I know most of us are using our cell phones for work. Uh, there's some places out there like GoDaddy. They offer like a nine ninety nine thing, nine dollars ninety nine cents a month, where um, you'll get your own phone number, the caller ID, be your business names. When you call in or you call out. Um, they will actually show your business name so in no way will be linked with your phone number um and it, it's it's just a way that you can separate it so there are services out there like i said nine ten bucks a month that you can go ahead and get that for this is just the basics so i don't want to go into too much details here very simple stuff um the first part is probably the most important that's something you want to speak with the cpa but again my tip for this part is don't go so proprietorship um former corporation former llc uh you're better you're going to be better off for it at the end you want to make sure that you, you don't commingle your personal funds with your business funds. If you do go corporation or LLC, that's a big no-no. The only way this stuff helps you out is if you run a business like a business. In other words, when you're an LLC or corporation, you pay yourself a salary and you keep all the expenses in the business account. All right. Again, speak with your CPA on that. Okay, so getting started with interstate authority requirements. The USDOT number, that's a given. Um, you're going to need it if you're going to be working for hire uh, over 10,000 pounds in your state. The next thing you need is your drug and alcohol consortium program. So, uh, and I get this question a lot. So it's only if you're over the 26,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating, meaning that's the max that you can haul. It's not how much you weigh at the moment. It's the max that your 
a combination of a truck and trailer can pull together. Um, and you can find that information out. Look, as far as trucks go, look on the side of the door. It'll do your GVWR, not, not um, gross weight, GVWR, there's a difference. Then look at the trailer in the front. You'll find where the VIN's at. You'll find the GVWR. Go ahead and add those two together and that tells you what your gross vehicle weight rating is. So if your truck is, um, let's give an example, 11,000 GVWR and your trailer is 10,000 GVWR, your total weight allowed is 20, 21,000 pounds. So uh, you don't need a CDL for that and you don't need to be enrolled into the drug and alcohol consortium program. It's very important again, because I say this because it gets messed up a lot, it's not gross vehicle weight. It's gross vehicle weight rating. That basically means what the manufacturer says that this piece of equipment can haul, the max weight, all right? So interstate, we got DOT, Drug and Alcohol Consortium Program. Your combination place. So this is the same thing as us registering our vehicles, personal vehicles. In this case, um, it's called your combination plates. Um, it's commercial vehicles and it's very simple. It's your DMV registrations for the vehicle. So you have to go ahead and go to the DMV and just register the vehicle under your name if you bought it. Now, if you have a vehicle that's under 26,000 pounds, let's say it's your pickup truck, all right? You have to go and register that as a commercial vehicle up to 26,000 pounds if you're under the weight. You will get fined if you're driving out there and your vehicle's registered as a personal vehicle opposed to a commercial vehicle, DOT will find you things like 550 or something. So just make sure again for under the weight, if you are using a personal vehicle and now you can start using it for business purposes, commercial reasons, you actually have to update that with the DMV. Uh, insurance, insurance, <laughs> you need that in order to uh, go ahead and be compliant with your state for interstate operations. And then finally, your state permit. You can call the DMV in your own state and find out if a state permit is required. And if it is required, the insurance will actually be the final thing that activates that state permit. Uh, and that filing is called the Form E filing. So if your state requires to have uh, certain permits uh, to be a trucking for higher operation or private, the insurance is always one of the last things that activate your authority. So you'll get your DOT, Drug and Alcohol Consortium, combination plates, and actually it'd be your state permit and then the insurance, all right? So I'm gonna show you guys a few examples of state permits, some of the main ones, all right? Uh, in the state of Texas, uh, whether you're for hire or private, if you're over 26,000 pounds, they want you to get what's a Texas DMV number. I have the link below, uh, Texas DMV number. The process takes normally 48 to 72 hours. You have to have the DOT completed by the time you get to this step. So again, if you're over 26,000 pounds, whether you're for hire or your own business, like you're a contractor, you just happen to have a big rig hauling, you know, your back host, you're gonna need to get what's called Texas DMV. We sometimes call it Texas DOT, but it's Texas DMV number, all right? For California, so in California, it's 10,000 pounds. All states are different. I'm gonna show you guys different states with different requirements, right? So in California, if you're over the 10,000 pounds, meaning you hit 10,001 pounds, then you're gonna need the CA number and the MCP number, which is a motor carrier permit. Just a heads up, California is one of the states that takes the longest. They do have the online application now. You have to get your CA first. And then once your CA is approved and you get it, then you can go ahead and fill out the um, MCP application. I have the link for that stuff below, okay? And again, California takes a while. So uh, whereas Texas is a couple of days, California is a couple, like four to five weeks. So just a heads up. Georgia, uh, same thing. Georgia only requires your state permit if you're intrastate only. Okay, so if you're interstate only, you're over 10,000 pounds for hire, you're gonna sign up with GIMC, Georgia Interstate Motor Carrier Registration. So uh, honestly, it's a very simple online application. I think it's like $10 per vehicle. Georgia's a little behind, a little bit more of a manual work, so you actually have to submit it to them, give them a week. Sometimes you do have to follow up. And then you also have to complete what's called GIMC online training. And basically, it's a few videos you have to watch, and at the bottom of it, you just have to sign in your name and say, yeah, I watch these videos. Uh, that's really it. They're kind of hoping that you're telling the truth. I know it's a bad system, but they're hoping you're telling the truth and that you watch these videos. At the end, you just sign the affidavit that you watched it, hit enter, and that's it. So a little bit different with their state permit. They're a little bit more manual. They're faster than California, but sometimes you gotta pick up the phone uh, to get it through. And then Florida, just to show you, I wanna I want make sure you guys see that there's different ones. That's why it's important to call up your DMV and ask them. Uh, and they'll always be able to guide you, even if, if you're not in the right department, they'll, they'll get you over to the right department. I've never had an issue where somebody couldn't tell me what state permits I need. So the next one up is Florida. 
Florida is pretty simple, uh, kind of like Arizona. There are no state permits. Uh, they actually just require you to use DOT number and to abide by all the rules. So wanted to give you guys the different uh, state permits, but again, the easiest thing you can do is just call up uh, your local DMV and ask them, hey, I'm a trucking company looking to get started. I want to know what permit I need so I'm legal on the road and they'll go ahead and get you to the right spot. Okay, so next up we have interstate authority. So we're going to go over some of the permits just touch on it because interstate or not, some of these go hand in hand. Again, guys, this is after you're done with all your basics, right? So you have your USDOT number, then you have your MC number. I've had this question a lot too. So USDOT and MC, you can get them at the same time when you do your application. If you don't pay $300, you don't have the interstate authority, motor carrier authority, you just have interstate. So um, if you want the MC number, if you don't pay $300 at the end, then you know it's wrong basically. So if it's free, you only got the USDOT. If you paid some money at the end after the application, then you purchased an authority, all right? So USDOT number, uh, motor carrier authority, then we have your drug and alcohol consortium program. Again, if you're over the 26,000 pounds, that doesn't matter if you're intra or interstate, the rule is it goes off of the weight. BOC3, your BOC3 is a um, process of service agent. Basically, if you have an MC number, uh, the way FMCSA sees it is you're crossing, you're going throughout the country. Um, and a BOC3 is so someone can legally uh, sue you in their state. So when you sign up with a process of service agent, what they do is they'll take the dot, let's say you're, you know, you're from Texas and something happens in Florida and someone wants to send some legal paperwork your way. What they'll do is they'll actually send it over to the process of service agent who's taking this legal documents on your behalf and they will actually send it over to you. It's never a good thing when you're using a process of service agent so you know for, uh, for this BOC3. It's a very simple process to do. You can just go ahead and Google BOC3 for USDOT filing link below for a company I like to use. I also have a video below on processing a BOC3. So check it out. Honestly, it takes no more than five, 10 minutes. Very simple. You can get it the same day as well. And it, it's only going to cost you, depending on the service you use, anywhere between $25 to $40. All right. So again, if you want to see a BOC3 in action, check out the uh, one of the videos I have below uh, for how to process the BOC3. Next up, we have the UCR Unified Carrier Registration. You pay this once a year. You pay per vehicles. Now, you only pay for what you start off with. Let's say you start off with one truck and six months down the line, you add 10 trucks, you're not gonna pay for the extra 10. You actually only pay on renewal for the extra 10. You just pay for the one you start with now when you get your MC number. Again, I have another video down below on how to process your UCR. Uh, it doesn't take too much long and you can only do it after you obtain your MC number. So if you don't have your MC number, you can't do it. In fact, it, it won't even pop up. So a UCR, Unified Care Registration, you have to renew it by December 31st every year. Most of the times they're always behind. Um, so even if you try to renew it, you can't. It seems that way for the last couple of years. I mean, they have an extension up to March anyhow, and they'll send you emails uh, letting you know, hey, you can go ahead and apply, it's open now. So UCR, it doesn't take that long. And basically UCI pays DOT, Port of Entry DOT. So anybody crossing uh, state lines has the MC number, you're gonna need to get your UCR, all right? Next thing is gonna be uh, your state permits. So we went over that. Uh, call your local DMV up to see if you need it or not. A portion plate. So we went over if you're interstate, you're going to need your combination plates. However, if you are interstate, you're going to go ahead and get your apportion plate. So this is where you're going to start paying IFTA. And actually, that's the next one up is your International Fuel Tax Association. If you guys have been trucking already, you already know uh, what that is. Basically, your apportion plates, just not to confuse things, is just your vehicle registration for your vehicle. The reason your registration is called a portion plate is because you're actually crossing uh, state lines. Again, a portion plates is just the registration of your vehicle. They're named differently because they have a couple of rules behind them. And again, your local DMV office can help you out with that. Just in regards to the portion plates, really it's as simple as Googling online your state name and then a portion plate registration. And this is the first page that popped up for me for California. So I did one for California real quick. And you could just go down here um, and it'll tell you how it works, the qualifications, and then the applications that you need uh, to go ahead and get it completed. Does it take a little bit? There's some reading. Yes, it does. It's very simple to look up the info, but you have to go ahead and you know do your due diligence, make sure you have uh, all the applications correct. Once you fill out the application, you can always call the DMV and they will actually walk over the application with you. So that's very nice. So California has an online registration you can use. And in a lot of states, your first one, you actually have to do it manually. In other words, form submission. And then after that, each year after that, you can go ahead and do it online. So just to show you, this is Texas site. Again, I just I just went ahead and Googled Texas apportion plates registration. This is the first page I got. And you can see here, this is their application. This is the application to get started. Again. You guys, if I'm not showing your state, again, very simple, Google 
state name, or portion plate registration. It's most likely gonna be the first or second link. Uh, get your applications, fill them out, and whatever you don't know, go ahead and call that DMV. There's always a number on here. Go ahead and call them and just start asking the questions. Okay, so that was a quick video on the permits you need after you obtain USDOT and MC number. If you have any questions in regards to how to obtain your authority, comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, any questions in regards to any part of the process or the application while you're doing your application, go ahead and comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share. This is Oscar Gold River Insurance, your trucking insurance broker.